If I can just give you a short introduction to CIPC for everybody who does not know CIPC. Um, CIPC was brought into existence by the Companies Act of 2008. In terms of Section 1851 of the Act, the Commission is established as a juristic person to function as an organ of state within the public administration but as an institution outside of a public service. If we look at just a very broad structure for CIPC, it has um, two main sections, which is business, businesses, the corporate regulation side, um, where you can register, for instance, companies, co-ops, and you have existing CCs. On the other hand, you also have the intellectual property side, uh, which is about innovation and creativity, um, then you find there your patents, your designs, your trademarks and your copyrights. The main objectives of CIPC is the registration of companies, cooperatives and intellectual property rights and the maintenance thereof. Disclosure of information on its registers, enforcement of a relevant re legislation, the promotion of education and awareness of company and intellectual property law, licensing of business rescue practitioners, monitoring and compliance with and the contravention of financial reporting standards and making recommendations V2. And also then to report, research and advise the Minister on matters of national policy relating to company and intellectual property law. If we can quickly look at the program for today, it's first myself, Alma Pinkham of the Corporate Education section. I've already done the welcome and the introduction, and I'm going to hand over to Lucinda Steenkamp. She's a senior legal advisor in the Corporate Legal Unit, and she will be doing our presentation on delinquent directors today. Thereafter, we will do our question and answer session. Thank you, Lucinda. Thanks very much, Alma. Good morning, everybody. Um, I uh, just want to ask again, please keep yourselves muted and your cameras turned off. If um, uh, you lose sound and you can't hear me at any point, don't uh, unmute and, and illustrate that. Just put it in the chat section because the facilitators will monitor the chat section and will immediately let me know if there is a problem with sound etc. I hope you're going to enjoy this presentation and uh, learn something new today. Let's kick off. Uh, this is about delinquent directors and this is definitely not a title that any director should strive for. One of the key objectives of the Companies Intellectual Property Commission is to promote compliance with the Companies Act and any other applicable legislation, which is um, highlighted in Schedule 4 of the Act, and to see to the efficient, effective and widest possible enforcement of the Act and any other applicable legislation. In order to achieve these objectives, the Commission may consult with any person, organization or institution with regard to any matter, as described in Section 186, the CIPC forms part of the interagency work group in an attempt to assist other organs of state in enforcing their respective legislation and also to consult with such organizations regarding the best way to enforce the Companies Act and other legislation and to create, create a basis for interagency legislation alignment. There is a very important distinction between disqualified and delinquent. It's very important to distinguish between being disqualified from being a director and being declared a delinquent director. A director declared delinquent is automatically disqualified from acting as a director of a company or a member of a CC. And you can have a look at Schedule 3 of the Act that talks about transparency and accountability of closed corporations, which explains in more detail where the member of a CC part comes in. However, a person that is disqualified from acting as a director is not automatically a delinquent director and may in some instances still act as a member of a closed corporation. So it's very important that that distinction is noted. There's a difference between disqualified and delinquent. 
It is clear from the recent Supreme Court of Appeal judgment, judgment regarding director delinquency that directors are starting to be held much more accountable for their actions and can even be held personally liable. The duty of acting as a director for a company must be taken seriously and only accepted if a person knows exactly what the duty of a director entails and what is required from that person in terms of code of conduct. Sections 76 and 77 of the Companies Act provide clear guidance to directors with regards to their duties. Directors and members, um, just a quick overview. Section 69.1 indicates clearly that the definition of a director includes an alternate director and a prescribed officer, or any person who is the member of a committee of a board of a company or any person who is a member of the audit committee of a company falls under the definition of a director. There is no distinction between executive and non-executive directors in the Act. Um, I just want to quote uh, the judge in the Howard versus Herigel uh, judgment. It is unhelpful and even misleading to classify company directors as executive and non-executive for purposes of ascertaining their duties to the company or when any other specific affirmation is required of them. No such distinction is to be found in any statute. At common law, once a person accepts appointment as a director, he becomes a fiduciary in relation to the company and is obliged to display the utmost good faith towards the company and in his dealings on its behalf. Section 1 of the Close Corporations Act describes a member as a person being qualified for membership of a corporation in terms of Section 21, which describes the whole list, and designated as a member in a founding statement of the corporation, including, subject to the provisions of this Act, a trustee, administrator, executor or curator or other legal representative. Section 29 of the CC Act describes qualification for membership as any natural person, any natural or heuristic person who is a trustee of a testamentary trust, any natural or heuristic person who is a trustee of an insolvent or deceased estate, and any natural person who is duly appointed as the legal representative of a member in the event of mental disorder or the incapability to manage his or her affairs. Ineligibility and disqualification of directors is where we start with. We're not dealing with delinquent as yet. Ineligibility to be a director in terms of section 69.7 is a heuristic person. A heuristic person meaning a company cannot be a director of a company. An unemancipated minor or similar legal disability or the company specific qualification as set out in the MOI is not satisfied. So companies can describe in their memorandum of incorporation specifically, specifically what qualifications a director must have to act as a director of this company. A company must not knowingly permit an ineligible person to serve or act as a director. Disqualified from being a director of a company, section 69.8, this is now disqualification. A person is disqualified from being a director if a court has prohibited that person from being a director or declared that person to be delinquent in terms of section 162 of the Companies Act and section 47 of the Closed Corporations Act. Uh, unrehabilitated insolvent. And if a person is prohibited in terms of any public regulation or has been removed from an office of trust involving uh, for misconduct involving dishonesty. Disqualified from being a member, from being a director continued if such a person has been convicted in South Africa or elsewhere. OK, so if a person has been convicted in South Africa or elsewhere for theft, fraud, forgery, perjury, or an offence that involves fraud, misrepresentation, or dishonesty, in connection with the promotion, formation, or management of a company, or in connection with any act contemplated in subsection 2 or 5, which relates to ineligibility and probation. Um, under the Companies Act, Insolvency Act, the Close Corporations Act, the Competition Act, 
the Financial Intelligence Center Act, the Security Services Act, or Chapter 2 of the Prevention and Combating Corruption Activities Act. All of these, uh, if you were, if a person was found guilty of fraud, etc., in terms of any of these legislations, then they're also disqualified from being a director. Okay, the next slide says disqualified from being a director, still. Um, if a court therefore issues a sequestration order to a, a specific person, that person is regarded as an unrehabilitated insolvent and cannot be appointed as a director of a company for a period of 10 years. This is automatic. If that person after 10 years, then he is automatically rehabilitated and that um, should be submitted with the CIPC so that the, his name can be removed from the disqualified director's register. Or a person can apply to court to set aside the sequestration order, what, whichever comes earlier. A disqualification in terms of subsection 8, B, 3 and 4 ends after five years or lapsing after any extensions that the court may have imposed, whichever is the latest. The CIPC must be notified upon the issue of any sequestration order or the issue of an order removing a person from an office of trust or upon a conviction of an offence referred to in subsection 8b4. The Commission has an obligation in terms of section 6911b to notify each company which has a director to which the order relates. It is then the responsibility of the companies and CCs to take necessary steps with regards to the removal of that person. If you are uh, disqualified in terms of the sections that I've highlighted already, vacancies on the board is immediate and the, these vacancies need to be filled by the relevant companies in terms of section 70. There is no obligation on the CIPC to remove a director or a member from a closed corporation in the event of ineligibility or disqualification. The onus lies on the company and the CC themselves to tend to the changes. Very important, we get a lot of queries where there is simply a court order submitted and uh, where a person is de declared disqualified and the CIPC is requested to remove them. We cannot do that. The responsibility lies with the company themselves. Okay. Disqualified from being a member. Section 47 of the CC Act describes which persons are disqualified, ineligible to act as a member of a CC, namely an unrehabilitated insolvent, which is the same as with regards to companies, any person removed from an office of trust on account of misconduct, any person convicted of theft, fraud, forgery, perjury, or any offence involving dishonesty and has been sentenced to imprisonment for at least six months without the option of a fine, and any person who is subject to any order of a court under the Companies Act, disqualifying him from being a director of a company. Any person disqualified from being, oh, there's an M missing, from being a member of a closed corporation who directly or indirectly takes part in or is concerned with the management of any corporation, shall be guilty of an offence. This is directly or indirectly or knowingly. Despite being disqualified in terms of Section 69.8b of the Companies Act, a person may still participate in the management of a corporation. If 100% of the member's interest in the corporation is held by that person. So if you have a CC with only one member, that is 100% um, member holder of member's interest in that CC, you can't disqualify that person from acting as a member because he is the sole member of the CC. So that is the distinction placed in terms of Section 69.8b of the Companies Act or if that person and other persons related to the disqualified member, if this is like a family-owned closed corporation, and each such person has provided consent in writing for the disqualified member to still act as a member of the CC. It's further explained in Schedule 3 of the Companies Act if you want to go and have a read. Okay, um, now we are getting to the delinquency part of 
the, the presentation. I hope everybody is still with me. Application for delinquency of a director happens in terms of Section 162 of the Companies Act. South Africans are aware of many a scandal involving directors and their conduct. I heard this morning that Steinhoff is once again in the news in the management of companies, but none as relevant as the declaration of delinquency of Ms. Dudu Mieni in the SAA matter. Mieni was referred to as grossly negligent, indifferent, and a dishonest and unreliable witness in the matter of the organization undoing tax abuse and South African Airways Pilots Association versus Dudu Mieni and others. There's the case number if you want to go and have a read. It's a very interesting judgment. And the High Court declared her to be a delinquent director and further declared that such delinquency will be lifelong. This is a landmark judgment in our law. It's the first time that a court has opposed lifelong delinquency on a director. The court further demonstrated its disapproval of her conduct by allowing a punitive cost order against her personally. So the government is not going to pay the, these legal costs or the cost order against her on an attorney and client scale. The cost order was levied against her personally. Also very important about this judgment is the fact that the Honorable Judge Tolme referred the matter to the National Prosecuting Authority for consideration of a possible investigation into criminal conduct of Ms. Mieni. This judgment clearly explains the deity of acting as a director and not understanding the fiduciary duties of acting in such a position. It can really uh, end up being making a person personally liable. Okay, section 162 of the Companies Act provides for the following persons to apply to a court for delinquency. A company, as a heuristic person, any shareholder of a company, a director of a company, the company secretary or prescribed officer of a company or a registered trade union that represents employees. Any of those parties can apply to a court for a delinquency or a probation order if the person is a director of the company or was a director within 24 months immediately preceding the application. So even if this person was a director in the two years previously, he can still bring an application for delinquency and any of the circumstances contemplated in subsection 5a to c is relevant it's the declaration for delinquency or if any of the subsections 7a and 8 apply an application for probation application for delinquency uh, i highlighted subsection 3 which states that the commission or the panel may apply to a court for an order declaring a person delinquent or under probation if that person is a director of a company or within the 24 months immediately preceding the application was a director of a company and any of the circumstances contemplated in subsection 5 apply. In many court cases it was confirmed by the learner judge that the courts do not have a discretion with regards to the order of delinquency. If all of the grounds therefore exist, the only discretion lies with regards to the length of the delinquency. Section 162.5 emphasizes the above sentiment expressed by the courts, stating that a court must make an order declaring a person to be a delinquent director if that person and any of the grounds for delinquency exists. So uh, what has been said here is that the court doesn't have a discretion in terms of the delinquency order. If any of the grounds for delinquency exist as described in the Companies Act, they must declare that person delinquent. The only discretion lies with the period of delinquency attached to that. The grounds for an application for delinquency as set out in section 162.5a to f are as follows. I try to break it down um, in easier terms. So the grounds on which an, uh, an application for delinquency against a director or a member will be if a person consented to serve or acted in the capacity of a director while ineligible 
or disqualified in terms of Section 69. So if a person is ineligible or disqualified in terms of the uh, grounds that we've listed earlier as set out in Section 69, and they consented to act as a director, or they acted in the capacity of director, then that is automatically a ground for, dis for delinquency. Or while a person is under probation in terms of this section or section 47B of the CC Act, and they acted as a director in a manner that contravened that probation order, that's a ground for delinquency application. And while a director grossly abused the position of director, took personal advantage of information or an opportunity contrary to Section 76.2a. Remember, I mentioned Section 76 describes the um, code of conduct for directors. So if they took personal advantage of information or an opportunity uh, for a contract that should have gone to the company itself, then that's grounds for delinquency application. If a person was intentionally or by gross negligence inflicted harm upon the company, acted in a manner that amounted to gross negligence, willful misconduct, misconduct or breach of trust in relation to the performance of a director's functions, or acted in a manner contemplated in Section 77.3a, b or c. It, all of these, um, I urge you to go and read the, the judgment with regards to Dudu Mieni and SAA because all of these reasons were listed as uh, what the judge found to be grounds for her delinquency order. The person acted on behalf of the co company without authority. Uh, if that person was not a director or the director wasn't uh, given approval by shareholders to act on behalf of the company and they continue to contract representing the company, that's ground for delinquency. If a person accepted without protest the carrying on of the company's business despite knowing that it is prohibited by Section 22, which talks to reckless trading, so a director's duties stretch even further in that if, even if you just keep quiet and do nothing, while you know that what the company is bu uh, busy with is uh, amounts to reckless trading or is willful misconduct, then you can be held uh, liable and declared a delinquent director. And even if a, a person has been a party to an act or an omission meant to defraud. So even keeping quiet is not going to save directors in this instance. If a person has repeatedly been personally subject to a compliance notice or similar enforcement measure in terms of any legislation, if such a person has at least twice been personally convicted of an offence or subjected to a fine in terms of any legislation. I want to emphasise this. If you have been convicted of, let's say, drunk driving twice, then you can be declared delinquent in the eyes of the law and not be able to act as a director of a company in terms of this section of the Act. Because it says, been convicted twice in terms of any legislation. If a person within a period of five years, which is not necessarily concurrent, was a director of a company or a member of a CC and they were convicted of an offence in terms of any legislation, again, while being a director or managing member of that company or CC, and the court is satisfied that the declaration of delinquency is justified having regard to the nature of the contraventions. So um, this, this last one is very wide in giving the court the discretion of looking at justified grounds for uh, the contraventions. If there was, uh, let's use the same metaphor, if there was two drunk driving convictions, the court and you, you are in management of a company that uh, is with regards to transport, it might be relevant. If you are a member of a director of a company that has nothing to do with driving, the contraventions in that instance might yeah, not be yeah, relevant. Yeah. When acting as a director while ineligible or disqualified 
in the order of delinquency is unconditional and subsists for that person's lifetime. So if you acted as a director while you are disqualified from being a director or ineligible, for example, an unrehabilitated insolvent, right. and an application for delinquency is brought against you, that delinquency is unconditional and subsists for that person's lifetime. When any of the grounds as described in subsections 5C to F, which I've already looked at, apply, the delinquency order may be subject to conditions as the court deems fit and subsists for seven years or such longer period as determined by the court. Yeah. So, um, so what happens here is that if the court decides that, yes, you are de declared delinquent, but they can attach certain conditions to that delinquency, for example, that you may act as director of certain entities but not others this subsists for a period of seven years at least but can be made longer by the court okay delinquent directors it's supposed to be disqualified directors register because disqualification is also indicated in the ddr in terms of the companies act 2008 the commission is required to maintain a register of disqualified directors and managing members of CCs. Any member of the public may have access to the Disqualified Director Register, the DDR for short. The information on the DDR as and when the CIPC is updated on judgments, etc., we have to be informed, otherwise we cannot fulfill that this role, is thus available to all members of the public and any organs of state to make sure that they don't knowingly appoint a director which is disqualified from being a director. A person who becomes ineligible or disqualified while serving as a director ceases to be entitled to continue to act as a director immediately. This is immediate. And the filing, filling of vacancies in terms of Section 70 of the Act applies. So the company has a duty to immediately fill those vacancies. The responsibility of removal of these directors or members lies with the relevant companies and CCs themselves and not the CIPC, as I've already mentioned. And that is me. Thank you very much for listening to me jabber on. I hope that at least some of it made sense. Any questions? Uh, I didn't see any questions in the chat, so you are more than welcome to direct any questions to myself now. Okay, I want to ask, Lucinda, people have been muted, so they must put up their hands. And then we'll tell them who can um, unmute himself because we'll be controlling it from this side. So um, please put up your hand if you have a question. Okay, thanks, Alma. I just want to reiterate, Alma indicated that everybody is uh, muted so that we can have a consistent flow of this webinar. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We will acknowledge you immediately and then you can unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Alma, um, there seems to be a hand up, but I can't see who that is from my side. Kolka, you can 